Wikipedia is not a valid source of information. You may have heard this line before and asked yourself, just what is wrong with Wikipedia? After all, it seems to be a decent source for things like astronomy, geography, and Chinese cartoons, right? Well, not exactly. The reality is, various biased admins of Wikipedia have been inching the site in a direction where it is merely a medium to spread partisan propaganda for quite some time now. And the best way to show this is, by far, the Gamergate controversy. I imagine people watching this video will vary from knowing a lot about Gamergate and those knowing very little, so I'll start this out with a quick rundown. But I should also state that if you are one of the anti-Gamergate people, I recommend that you watch this video to the end with an open mind, as I will be including quite a lot of evidence against the narrative you may have heard. To put it briefly, Gamergate was, and still is, one of the biggest examples of the establishment media utilizing the tactic of lying by omission. The Gamergate movement is generally a backlash against poor journalistic standards, woke scolding, and other forms of cringy, unnecessary identity politics in video games and as well as other media. It first started with rumors about some girl trading, we'll just say, favors for positive media coverage, but later the movement evolved to have very little to do with those rumors as it is only occasionally brought up in pro-Gamergate discussion boards these days. However, a small portion of Gamergators were trolls who took it too far. Things like threats of violence, blatant misogyny, and other such shit-flinging. Unfortunately, these trolls gave the journalists who were being criticized a a perfect exit strategy to avoid that criticism. And this is where the big grift comes in. The media decided to overwhelmingly only report on Gamergate as if everyone was a part of the misogynistic trolls, thus falsely painting all of Gamergate as a harassment campaign through the magic of guilt by association policy. It's kind of like if there is a protest with a thousand people or so, and maybe ten of those protesters get into a fight. If the media wants to make the cause of the entire protest look bad, they can simply have violent riot in favor of X idea emerges in town square as their headline, completely omitting the other 99% of protesters who did nothing wrong. Or on the flip side, if the media wants to paint the cause of a protest in a positive light, they can publish the opposite headline, fiery but mostly peaceful protest, which as some may recall, actually happened. Media deception is very easy. It really doesn't take much effort for a dishonest journalist to only report the facts that agree with their bias in order to paint a story that is completely ridiculous. Simply omit whatever facts don't suit your narrative and presto, the remaining facts suit your narrative. This, in a nutshell, is the truth of Gamergate. And the big irony in it all is that because of a big part of Gamergate is a critique of media bias, and journalists use dishonest tactics to paint all of Gamergate as extremist bigots, said journalists actually proved that Gamergate is right about them. So with the basics out of the way, we can now look at Wikipedia's Gamergate article and see just how much of this they got correct, and it's one of the most ridiculous pieces of propaganda on the internet. In fact, Wikipedia is possibly the biggest source of misinformation regarding Gamergate today, and continues to stand as the largest reason why it's impossible to have a reasonable, intelligent discussion about Gamergate. Your average person is just going to plug Gamergate into Google, see Wikipedia as the first result, and eat up the propaganda while having no idea that just about everything in this article is a dishonest spin job. So let's Let's get down to refuting it, starting with the summary at the top. Gamergate was an online harassment campaign initially conducted through the use of hashtag Gamergate that promoted sexism and anti-progressivism in video game culture. First problem, there is no real evidence whatsoever that Gamergate was an organized harassment campaign. Everywhere that Gamergate was, or still is, actually organized, such as Kotaku in Action, GG Wiki, Gamergate.me, or even under well-known figures like Bodle Biscuit, rest in peace, all are or were predominantly focused on ethics and journalism, and a counter-movement against wokeness in the media. To actually find any alleged misogyny or harassment, you have to dig through individual troll accounts, or even random shit posts on 4chan in order to find it. The most obvious proof of this would be in KIA's rules. How can a movement be a, quote, harassment campaign, end quote, if their biggest organized community actively bans doxing individual accounts, misinformation, trolling, and harassment? If a movement that is supposedly founded on violent death threats bans the use of violent death threats on their primary discussion hub, they certainly aren't doing a very good job at being what they are accused of. This evidence alone should be a red flag to anyone with common sense that the establishment narrative on Gamergate is clearly not founded in reality. And we we are just getting started here. Beginning August 2014, it targeted women in the video game industry, notably game developer Zoe Quinn and Brianna Wu, and feminist media critic Anita Clarkesian. The harassment campaign included doxing, the threats of rape, and death threats. 
more blaming the entire movement for the worst of its trolls via guilt by association. This is an example of another common grift employed by the Cult of Woke, a claim that criticism of X person or group automatically equates to hatred and harassment of X person or group. To put it simply, it's a straw man argument. This rationale only makes sense if you interpret all criticism, regardless of context, in the most bad faith interpretation you can possibly think of. While there may have been a small handful of genuine shades thrown in the direction of these three people, a lot of what I have seen about them is genuine criticism, primarily how all three of them are arguably guilty of professional victimhood, which is a form of cry-bullying for the purpose of attention, and in some cases grifting victim bucks, calling a lot of the alleged harassment against them into question. Whether or not you agree with any of this criticism, or if you think these allegations are a load of woo, doesn't really matter. It's criticism, not hatred, not harassment, criticism. Very big difference. Gamergate, whose view is a right-wing back against progressivism. Gamergate proponents, Gamergators, have stated that they were a social movement, but they had no leaders or manifesto, and statements claiming to represent Gamergate have been inconsistent or unfounded. Gamergators falsely accused Quinn of an unethical relationship with journalist Nathan Grayson, and more generally claimed that there was an unethical collusion between the press and feminist progressives and social critics. These claims were widely dismissed as trivial conspiracy theories, groundless or unrelated to actual issues of ethics and gaming. Gamergate supporters have frequently denied the harassment took place or falsely claimed that it was manufactured by the victims. So now we are getting into the information that is simply untrue. Moderators of the pro gamergate discussion boards and contributors to the wiki all have compiled a fairly extensive amount of information in regards to what Gamergate is. Treating Gamergate as directionless is a flat out lie. For instance, both the GG wiki and KIA wiki have the three C's of Gamergate, corruption, collusion, and censorship, detailing the dishonesty of the establishment media and their backroom deals to hide their shit fuckery. Seems fairly straightforward and consistent to me. Wikipedia also claims that there is no evidence for said unethical collusion, dismissing it as a conspiracy theory. Now, let's just think about that logically for a moment. Do you really think it is probable that games journalism is completely free from all forms of ethical issues? 100% squeaky clean? Of course not. There is tons of documented evidence of bad journalism on both KIA's wiki and the GG Deep Freeze wiki. Just as a major example out of dozens, the Game Journal Pros leak. This was a private email group comprised of multiple gaming journalists from multiple different publications. Some of them were found to be colluding to publish similar stories in order to give those stories the illusion of greater legitimacy, when in reality it was just people meeting behind closed doors. Have you ever suspected that members of the establishment media collude to push certain narratives? Well, at least in regards to gaming media, this seems to be the case. Proof of this mailing list, along with the leak and list in full, are available online and easily found by searching for it in DuckDuckGo. The effects of it could also be found in the Gamers Are Dead campaign, where multiple articles from multiple different major media circles all bore the same strange narrative that the identity of gamers has died to some mysterious, massive wave of alleged misogyny. And this is where another big grift comes in. Notice how Wikipedia's Gamergate article doesn't mention the Game Journal Pro's leak anywhere. It's completely omitted. And yet, on the GG Deep Freeze wiki, it's cited as the primary factor in what truly set Gamergate off. While the whole conspiracy was the match that started the fire, it was not the barrels of gasoline close by that truly made Gamergate explode into what it was. In fact, in my opinion, Gamergate would have likely happened at a later date, even without the whole rumors about trading favors for positive reviews thing happening. The problem of journalists colluding on narratives in order to give those narratives a false sense of consensus is a very big problem, not just in the gaming media, but establishment media today as a whole. And it is this collusion and conflicts of interest that truly makes Gamergate what it is. And as for the last line here, it isn't completely untrue, but it does need to be pointed out that it's not so much feminism, but toxic wokeness in general. Most Gamergators I have seen have nothing wrong with strong female characters in their games, otherwise similar hatred would be directed at Japanese developers, which have had solid female lead roles in their games for years. It's only when it's combined with preachy identity politics that it tends to draw their ire. There is a very big difference between minority and female characters existing in games and forced representation, i.e. tokenism, where a character is created purely for the sake of virtue signaling and imposing a social justice bias into the story. There was a fairly well done explanation of this put out recently by Literature Devil on why manga triumphs over woke western comics in the market by focusing on diversity of story rather than the cringy tokenist diversity we see in western media. This is what the Gamergate community is actually concerned with. The rest of the Wikipedia article is really just a TLDR gish gallop version of the summary at the top. It immediately dives into doubling down on placing extreme overemphasis on the harassment narrative and guilt by association for the rest of Gamergate that had no part in it. But more importantly, this is where we start to see the, where the major problem with Wikipedia's Gamergate article really lies. Their sources. 
The sources Wikipedia is using here are overwhelmingly just opinion editorials, or published works focused on opinion. They do not actually provide any serious evidence for their claims, nor any study with provided methodology that can be falsified, and therefore they have no more basis in fact than any random effort post you might find on any random forums. For example, the first five sources that are not books are all opinion editorials. To emphasize how idiotic that is, even 4chan's news board does not allow the use of opinion editorials. Yes, that's right, 4chan's news board has higher standards for sources than Wikipedia. This is nothing short of absolutely embarrassing. So let's look at some more highlights. In the section of Han harassment, aside from just being an example of dishonest emphasis and omission, many of the sources utilized the double standard policy when talking about incidents of harassment all of Gamergate is presumed as guilty. But when mentioning Gamergaters who talk about ethics and journalism, if any mention is made of them at all, they will fall back on the inaccurate claim that Gamergate has no clear manifesto, implying that they therefore cannot represent the movement. So basically, individuals are only allowed to represent Gamergate when those individuals say something that agrees with the narrative being pushed. A good example of this is Source 8 from the Christian Science Monitor. In the section on organization, the false claim that Gamergate has no clearly defined agenda is again repeated. Despite it being laid out quite simply on the Gamergate wiki, anyone can just go there and see that this claim is untrue. In source number 101, cited through source number 93, we reach an opinion article by The Atlantic that provides zero evidence for this position and states that he could not find a single explanation of a coherent Gamergate position. But yet, somehow, they are very certain that it's a harassment campaign. So these people are basically flat out admitting that they don't really understand Gamergate at all, and yet somehow they are considered a reliable source of information in the section on harassment and Twitter, opinion editorials, opinion editorials, etc, etc, etc. Again, no actual objective evidence in any of these sources that Gamergate is primarily a harassment campaign as Wikipedia claims. In the section on public perceptions, the sources here tell us that hashtag not your shield is an invalid movement because some people on 4chan were shitposting about it in IRC. Brilliant reasoning there. Guess the message that corrupt journalists were using harassment accusations to shield themselves from criticism is an invalid message because some random people from 4chan talked about it. That's totally not a genetic fallacy at all, I guess. Then, in the Purpose and Goals section, Wikipedia tries to refute the claim that Gamergate is about ethics and journalism by quoting mostly opinion editorials again. However, one of the sources here, number 87, stands out. Unlike the other sources, this one is actually not an opinion editorial. This one claims to actually have some verifiable data proving the claim that it's all harassment campaign. Now, this article really needs a good look, because I believe it perfectly emphasizes the extreme dishonesty of the establishment media when dealing with Gamergate. The study analyzed tweets about Gamergate aimed at Sarkis Jian Quinn, Wu, Kotaku, Alexander, Gracian, and Totilo, and then made the argument that because the women received more tweets than the men, then clearly Gamergate must be about harassing women. Now, I understand that data analysis can be confusing, so allow me to give an analogy that just shows how absurd this is. Say you are the head of a company that creates snacks for children. A salesman comes to you with a pitch that his new shit-flavored lollipop will be all the rage with the kids these days. In order to prove that kids like to eat shit, the salesman conducted a study examining school playground conversations. It limited the scope of this study down to that of specifically eating shit while ignoring all other conversations about crap. The salesman then shows you that within this limited conversation scope, kids discussed eating shit more than they discussed not eating shit. Therefore, kids must like to eat shit. The salesman also refuses to provide the full methodology of his study. When looking at the limited data that he did provide you, you discover that the percentage of kids who actually wanted to eat shit in the conversation about doing so was only 1.26%. When you look at the salesman and tell him that this actually proves that kids do not want to eat shit, the salesman smiles and calls you a bigot. This is legitimately the same logic as what this Newsweek brand watch study is doing. They limited their analysis to the 10% of so are Gamergate tweets that were about the specific people and groups they had in mind while ignoring all the rest of the conversation. What about the overwhelming majority of the Gamergate conversation that had nothing to do with these people? Where did that data go? Well, we don't know because Newsweek did not publish the full results of their study and methodology at all. And when we look at the data that is limited to what they did make public, we see that only 1.26% of tweets analyzed were actually negative towards these people, out of the total amount of tweets analyzed. You cannot make this shit up. 
So yeah, of course, if you only focus on a small subset of the data that only has specific attributes, you're going to mainly find data in regards to those attributes. No shit Sherlock. Now, if they really wanted to honestly examine if Gamergate was a hate mob or about ethics and journalism, they could just randomly select from all Gamergate tweets and simply rate that tweet on whether it was harassment or if it was criticism of journalism or other. And most importantly of all, PUBLISH THE METHODOLOGY AND RESEARCH PAPERS PUBLICLY IN FULL. Limiting the scope of the conversation in a case like this is completely unnecessary, and the fact that their methodology cannot be replicated or verified since they didn't provide it leads us to the most probable conclusion. This study was conducted in bad faith. Torturing the data until the data agrees with the presupposed conclusion was their end goal all along. Total Biscuit also did a take on this. A recent statistical analysis by Newsweek attempted to prove that Gamergate supporters are by and large using the hashtag to harass women, yet their analysis was clearly flawed. They attempt to create the link by showing that Anita Sarkeesian and Brianna Wu were the individuals that received the most tweets, which also contain the Gamergate hashtag. However, their analysis also showed that the vast majority of these tweets were neutral in nature and contained neither positive nor negative tone. Now, unless we're claiming that tweeting at this person equals harassment, which is in itself ridiculous, I find it hard to take this as proof that the majority of people participating in this thing want to harass women. Indeed, what we see is that the two people who have most actively engaged with hashtag Gamergate in a negative fashion, throwing constant accusations at it over Twitter, are the ones who have in turn received the most feedback. This is entirely logical. Those who have not actively done so have received less direct engagement. This is how social media works. It's this kind of deliberate twisting of the facts that I find deeply concerning. This study, in my opinion, is the biggest 1984 George Orwell moment out of all of Wikipedia's sources. The data clearly proves the exact opposite of what Newsweek is claiming, but everyone else at the time was so afraid to question the narrative, lest they be labeled as part of the hate mob, that they got away with it. From this point, the Wikipedia article continues on a predictable pattern. One-sided takes while citing opinion articles, no real evidence, more one-sided takes, citing opinion articles, the FBI telling these clowns to fuck off because they have better things to do, and so on and so forth. One thing worthy of note, though, is that as we reach down towards the end with the legacy and game industry response, we start to see examples of circular reporting. And this is something that even people who would generally consider to be on the left have noticed as a problem with Wikipedia. Members in the game industry saw overwhelmingly negative coverage of Gamergate at this time by the establishment media. So as not to harm their own reputations, they of course spoke critically of it. And then Wikipedia recorded the negative feedback. More people in high places see the negative feedback on Wikipedia, assume it is true, and then it ends up on Wikipedia and around and round it goes. This, in my opinion, calls the legitimacy of the entire thing into very serious question. How many of these news articles are genuine original takes, and how many are just jumping on the bandwagon after reading about it on Wikipedia? This is the main reason I'm not going over 100% of the Wikipedia's Gamergate article in every single source. It would get redundant, as most of the establishment media simply repeated the same misinformation with slightly different takes. This circle jerk can also be seen in many BreadTube videos that mirror the propaganda playbook of placing a dishonestly high amount of emphasis on the harassment narrative while making zero effort to even acknowledge, let alone refute, arguments from the other side. Basically just intellectually lazy grifters copying their narrative from Wikipedia in order to virtue signal, downloading approved opinions.xml, you get the idea. Nothing special there. We can find further evidence against this narrative on the GG Wiki, which claims that Wikipedia administrators fabricated a harassment narrative which then spread through the media without correction. That's a pr pretty harsh allegation, so let's see what evidence they have to support it. Well, not much really, just multiple cases of rejecting any source that disagreed with their predetermined narrative, multiple cases of people being banned for disagreeing with the predetermined narrative, arbitration case on Wikipedia that is a clown show of non-existent reasoning skills, dozens of evidence regarding bias in the administration, and of course, Wikipedia staff demanding the deletion of evidence of their shitfuckery. But most importantly, looking into the Deep Freeze Wiki shows us just how much Wikipedia omitted. Gamergators actually made their own proposed Wikipedia entry, which includes the issues of ethics and journalism such as Game Journal Prosley, which proved that journalists were colluding on narratives, and paid brand deals where developers were trying to pay big-name YouTubers to shill their games, with contractual obligations, of course, that the shilling had to include positive reviews. There's also dozens of instances that Gamergators uncovered of journalists positively recovering their friends without any disclosure. So, that brings up the question, how did this happen? How is it Wikipedia places its stamp of approval on something so blatantly biased? 
Well, the problem comes down to a combination of serious issues that the Wikipedia administration has failed to address. The first of these is that Wikipedia no longer has an effective neutral point of view policy. The co-founder of Wikipedia, Larry Sanger, pointed out that the problem on his blog, explaining how the current administration has abandoned NPOV for the dogma of false balance. This effectively allows the admins to decide what is and what isn't true as a final say. And because these people overwhelmingly lead towards the DNC in American politics, this means that just about every political issue on Wikipedia ends up being filled with DNC propaganda, being reported as if it is fact. This bias is also mirrored in their reliable sources. Sources that regularly represent a highly opinionated leftist bias, like HuffPost, are allowed, while sources that present highly opinionated right-wing bias, like NYPost, are blacklisted. This just further shows how Wikipedia no longer follows their rules for maintaining a viable, neutral point of view strategy. Oh, and by the way, WikiLeaks is blacklisted. Yes, I'm not kidding. If anything shows that Wikipedia is completely full of it, it's this. Because it's important to note that nothing on WikiLeaks has ever been proven false to date. WikiLeaks has an extremely robust vetting process to ensure that the documents they publish are genuine. They have a perfect record. You can argue over the unconventional practices of WikiLeaks all you like, but the truth remains that what they release is solid. So why did WikiLeaks have to be declared an invalid source? Oh, I know why, because they called these liars out on their BS. They said, in regards to Gamergate, it has been slandered in the media through various tabloid hit pieces as a hate movement via faulty evidence, cherry picking, and publishing articles marred by poor ethics, lack of fact checking, outright lying, and yellow journalism. This mirrors some of the same corruption practice within larger media outlets and governments. And finally, you run into the issue of verifiability, not truth. Wikipedia requires all information to come from what is deemed by the mods and admins as a reliable source, even if that information can be demonstrated to be completely illogical. In their own words, sometimes we know for sure that reliable sources are an error, but we cannot find replacement sources that are correct. This means if a so-called reliable source posts something about what is written on an internet blog that is false, Wikipedia will side with the reliable source, even though anyone can just go to the blog and clearly see that the reliable source is wrong. This wouldn't be too big of an issue if Wikipedia was actually reasonable about which sources are reliable, and still had an effective NPOV policy, like they used to in the early 2000s. But they no longer do. This effectively means that logic and reason do not matter to Wikipedia. And that's a very big problem, as logic and reason is usually the first line of defense against propaganda. This explains why just about every political article on Wikipedia is now so one-sided. Just as a test you can do yourself, look up the last eight presidents of the United States, and just note the extreme difference in tone and coverage between political parties, the disparity in bias against the Republican presidents, plus the omission of scandals from Democrat presidents, is blindingly obvious. The truth of Gamergate is that it was a movement, still ongoing, that exposed a lot of corruption in the mainstream media and games journalism. And in order to avoid that criticism, the media turned to the harassment narrative as a red herring, opting to publish hundreds of articles that were either bullshit opinion pieces with zero re reproducible evidence or demonstrably flawed studies that when analyzed were clearly conducted in bad faith. They omitted all of the good things Gamergate did from their narrative and all of what they uncovered and instead placed an extraordinarily dishonest amount of attention and weight on a harassment story that was, again, by their own data, only 1% of the movement at worst. And from this, we can piece a final verdict on what the Gamergate article on Wikipedia really means. The entire thing can effectively be summarized as, there are no ethical problems or issues of corruption within gaming journalism or the mainstream media, and anyone who disagrees is a sexist bigot. Source gaming journalists, and the mainstream media. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can help out by sharing it with your friends, as videos on this topic have a very high chance of being shadow banned. Till next time.